Michael Burry, the hedge fund manager made famous by Michael Lewis's book, The Big Short, and the movie of the same name. If you've not seen the movie, here's a clip of how Burry made his billions. Mortgage-backed securities, <laughs> subprime loans, tranches. It's pretty confusing, right? Does it make you feel bored or stupid? Well, it's supposed to. Wall Street loves to use confusing terms to make you think only they can do what they do. Or even better, for you just to leave them the fuck alone. So here's Margot Robbie in a bubble bath to explain. Basically, Louis Rainieri's mortgage bonds were amazingly profitable for the big banks. They made billions and billions on their 2% fee they got for selling each of these bonds. But then they started running out of mortgages to put in them. After all, there are only so many homes and so many people with good enough jobs to buy them, right? So the banks started filling these bonds with riskier and riskier mortgages. Thank you, Benjo. That way, they can keep that profit machine churning, right? By the way, these risky mortgages are called subprime. So whenever you hear subprime, think shit. Our friend Michael Burry found out that these mortgage bonds that were supposedly 65% AAA were actually just mostly full of shit. So now he's going to short the bonds, which means to bet against. Got it? Okay. Now fuck off. Michael Burry made his short bet by collateralized debt obligations, CDOs, basically betting against the mortgage-backed security market. Bill Ackman made his money betting against commercial bonds, turning $27 million into $2.6 billion. How did he do it? Smash that like button and we're about to show you. So who is Bill Ackman? Well, he's a legendary hedge fund manager that manages about $12 billion in assets, $6 billion through a publicly traded stock that anyone can buy, and it's listed on the English and Amsterdam markets, and he manages about $6 billion privately. You might also have heard of him as the guy who tried to unsuccessfully short Herbalife, a nutrition supplement company. This failed bet from about 2013 to 2018 ended up costing his firm about a billion dollars. This led to Ackman having terrible performance from 2015 to 2018. In fact, his returns were negative each year, and many investors actually began withdrawing from his fund. Ackman was being counted out, and he was motivated to turn around this performance. In 2019, his fund returned a staggering 58%, and he became, once again, one of Wall Street's favorite fund managers. His fund, since inception, has returned 885%, compared to only 259% of the S&P 500. This works out to about a 15% yearly return for Ackman, compared to only 7.5% of the market. So Ackman's powers were growing as we approached the crisis in early 2020. So what was Ackman's big short position, and how is it different from the famous original big short position? Michael Burry, a famous hedge fund manager, was featured in a book called The Big Short and later a Hollywood movie in 2015 because of his famous trade that helped his fund return 167% in 2007. And he closed his fund, earning almost 700% before fees. Burry, like Ackman, bought credit default swaps. We will soon explain how these swaps work in a more thorough example. But for now, let's let Warren Buffett, the legendary investor, explain the basics. Well, I, they 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 can be a very destructive instrument i mean if you think about it you can't go out and insure my house against fire because you do not have an insurable interest as they call it in the trade because once you insure my house against fire uh and you may decide that you know that maybe dropping a few matches around my lawn might be a good idea however there is a key difference in ackman's big short to burry's Burry started shorting mortgage bonds in 2005, and it took him until 2007 to realize his profits. This was a big issue as investors worried when the fund lost 18% of their money in 2006. The position was such a liquidity drain that if Burry's other assets stayed flat, his fund would lose 8% a year. Because of this, clients started withdrawing their money, and Burry had to cut his position by almost two-thirds. As clients withdrew money, it seemed that Burry would have to liquidate the position at a huge loss. To mitigate this risk, he took draconian measures, and he suspended all client withdrawals. Even with the suspension of withdrawals, if the bet didn't pay off in 2007, and if it took another two years for the mortgage market to implode, Burry may have lost it all. Fortunately for him, the bet did pay off in 2007, and he was able to liquidate his position at a humongous profit. 
So imagine Bill Ackman now. His trade is almost exactly the same as Michael Burry's, except instead of taking about two years to pay off, he got his payoff in about 30 days. How did he do it? Let's go through the big short number two. In February 2020, Ackman was increasingly concerned that the market was about to blow up because of the coronavirus. He said the following. When I did the math, I said, you know, the laws of probability tell me this thing is going to be everywhere. Everyone. 50% of the world is going to get infected. And I sort of rolled this thing forward. And I said, it's just, it's just a matter of time. At first, he was so nervous that he thought about liquidating just all his assets and going 100% in cash. He then calmed down and he thought of a way to protect his portfolio without selling his stocks. He then updated investors on March 3rd with an ominous message. He said, During the past 10 days, we have taken steps to protect the portfolio from downward market volatility. We have done so because we believe that efforts to contain the coronavirus are likely to have a substantial negative impact on the U.S. and global economies and on the equity and credit markets. Bill Ackman, like Burry, used credit default swaps to make money. The reason for using credit default swaps is it's actually a safer way to bet for defaults in bonds. So even though the movie's called The Big Short, Technically, you're just buying insurance, and in reality, you're actually going long the position. So essentially, as Warren Buffett says, you're basically buying insurance on a home, but you don't own the home, so you actually just hope it burns down. But if the house doesn't burn down, you only risk losing those insurance premiums that you paid. Typically, a usual short position has unlimited losses if the asset keeps going up in value, so credit default swaps protect your downside risk. So Ackman used credit default swaps as his weapon of choice to bet against the market. We will later show at the end his risk if the bet did go awry. While Burry bet against mortgage bonds, Ackman turned his eye towards corporate bonds, which were trading at historically low yields, meaning the market determined that these assets were the safest they've ever been. And corporate bond insurance was also at historic lows at only 50 basis points or 0.5%. He felt, given the effects of the virus, the price for insurance would rise from 50 basis points to some higher number. It eventually did rise to a price of about three times this 50 basis points or 1.5%. But this begs the question, how did Ackman then make 100 times his money if the price for insurance only rose 1% or about three times? So first, if you'd like to calculate how a credit default swap is valued, we have a free sheet on our Patreon page showing different type of investor inputs. But basically for credit default swap insurance to rise from 0.5% to 1.5%, you would need the probability of bond default to go from about 1.5% to 5%. This essentially just means that you would expect now 5% of all bonds to default. So this happened, but how did Ackman make 100 times his money? Well, he bought a lot of insurance protection. Ackman said in his update letter on March 25th that he paid only $27 million for credit protection. What he doesn't necessarily spell out is this $27 million has to be paid monthly for five years. So per year, that would be $324 million. So if the bet didn't pay off in a year, he would lose 6% of all his fund's money or $324 million on just this one position. But if we take that number of $324 million a year divided by the credit default insurance rate of 0.5%, that turns into $64.7 billion of bonds that Ackman was buying protection on. To give a sense of how large that is, the U.S. investment grade corporate debt market is just over $6 trillion. So Ackman was essentially buying insurance against 1% of all these bonds. The second part of our sheet is on the second tab, and you can see how this value would go from about $1.6 billion to about $4.3 billion. Here is why. So the first one is imagine you're an investor getting about $27 million a month, which is what Ackman was paying. $27 million a month for 12 months times 5 years is about $1.6 billion. The reason it is five years is a typical credit default swap contract is for five years. The value of this holding is then discounted by what the U.S. Treasury rate is, which was around 1.5%. So the present value is about 1.55 billion. However, what happens now if the risk rises by three times and now you're paying insurance premiums of about $73 million a month? $73 $73 million a month times 12 months times 5 years is about $4.3 billion or about $4.2 billion discounted at the risk-free rate. If you subtract the difference between the two present values, the difference is an increase of about $2.6 billion in value, which is the profit that Ackman made. So Ackman quickly had a $2.6 billion paper gain because he can now sell this position to someone else who wanted to buy credit insurance. 
Quickly, let's just see what would happen if the price for credit insurance dropped by half. As can be seen, Ackman's paper value would decline by about 800 million. But Ackman was fairly confident with credit default swaps at record lows for investment grade bonds that they wouldn't go much lower. Therefore, he didn't expect to lose this amount of money. On March 18th, when Ackman went on CNBC, he had already sold half his position and he was able to completely exit his position by March 23rd, right at the peak. Prices have declined somewhat since then, but they are still quite elevated. As can be seen, credit default swaps are still at about 120 basis points for insurance, well above the price that Ackman originally bought his position at. What was even better for Ackman is that he exited his big short position around March 24th when the market was at its lows, or down about 24%. He then began using this profit to buy his favorite stocks. Ackman said he increased his stake in Hilton by 34%, Howard Hughes by 158%, and he even bought more of Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway. This 100 times profit on a $27 million investment has led Ackman to be up 16.5% this year compared to the S&P 500, which is down a bit more than 11% on the year. And he's part of a trade that may inspire another movie and may go down as one of the greatest trades of all time. Let us know in the comments what trade you think was better. Ackman's was certainly better on paper, but Burry definitely did a lot more research while Ackman's bet relied mostly on his keen sense of intuition. Mm -hmm.